Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the presentation for DAPCO, the Danes Abroad Business Pro Group Online, from 2nd of November, about social media marketing. Where is the ROI? I'm Erzi Gattaker. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Calmetrics Right Tribe Labs. We have structured the presentation into four parts, as you can see here on this particular slide. Let me go into slide four, where we just define social media, where we say it encompasses any tool or service that uses telecommunication technology. So it can range from Facebook, Twitter, Skype, and so forth. The social media for, for my organization means basically that I need to think about the fact that empowers consumers of content to become producers of content. And we have moved from a broadcast model to a model of many to many or many to few. And this is interesting as so far as we need a lot of apps which people have downloaded. But even if you have 40,000 downloads, as this example shows from the Süddeutsche magazine, it could mean 600 euro more revenue each weekend. But that may not cover the expenses you have lost by not having people subscribe to the printed version anymore. This brings me to section two. The study really says, and this is quite interesting, people want to share content to promote themselves. So there's a danger of broadcasting again, even though you're supposed to have a discussion. And this is what happens in a lot of social media groups on LinkedIn or Xing like this one shows where the first one, Eva, introduces herself, but for two weeks, none of the moderators feels it necessary to reply to her. So how can we have a conversation if I'm not even listened to by the moderators? Maurizio broadcasts, but I can't really answer to him. So, and so does Wolfgang. It's a broadcasting model. These people are human resource experts, but they should know actually better. And then you have somebody like Aviva, a large British insurer, that boosts that they will donate two pounds per picture uploaded to their Facebook page to the Save the Children charity. And so people do, but the first ad, the one which you see here, which is, third, which is the third page in the Financial Times, costs more than they will contribute in total to the charity because they only have about 50,000 people who have participated in the whole thing. So what does this mean if we have all these cases where we actually seem to flop or not to do too well. Well, you need to benchmark. That's the, that's the issue here. And of course, you need to choose the right benchmark. Chicago Booth uses its Nobel Prize winners on staff as the right benchmark for you as a potential attendee to their executive management program to use to benchmark the different schools or compare them. But this is kind of useless. It's a good advertising gimmick, but it's not going to tell you or give you an indication if those people are good in the classroom and if they're really going to teach you at this school the right stuff about marketing or entrepreneurship, which you need. I'm not sure. So we need to have some kind of smart, specific, manageable, actionable, relevant and trending metrics, as I outlined below. And these need to make sense to your boss, the target audience, as well as to some others, your potential applicants to school program. Here, if we look at blogs, which is a social media platform which you need to benchmark. You can see that we have a spike here in July, uh, but you don't have every time where Roger Federer just uh, maybe links to one of your posts or mention one of your posts in one of his blog entries. And on the, on the right, if we look on the 8th of October, you can see that uh, actually both drops. That means in this particular instance, what we had was that the API of Google and Yahoo failed to work properly at that time. Now, all this gives you measures which you can look, you can trend it, you can do it, and then you can report back and say, yes, we're moving in the right direction, or yes, this Facebook advertising campaign from Ariva, which cost us 15 euros per new Facebook member we got, or 25, was worth the effort, and we, only if you benchmark. And this brings me to the wrap up, which basically would suggest first what you need to do is you need to figure out the purpose. Why am I doing this for my clients? What are they supposed to get out of it? Thereafter, you get the strategy right. So how am I going to deliver what the client needs? And do not forget at the end to measure so you can improve. 
If you don't measure, if your advertising campaign that encouraged people to uh, fan your page on Facebook was a success, and is it just a number or is it a little bit more? This already uh, leads me to the conclusion of this presentation. You have the two links here. I urge you to go and have a look at them because the slides there are longer than what you see in this short YouTube uh, video. If you have any questions or something else, just give us a shout. That will gladly help. This concludes the short presentation. Thanks for attending.